Hi, welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee. Today we're going to talk about the topic of make or break. This Sunday Morning Coffee episode is being recorded on the autumn equinox. So we are in September and we are stepping into the autumn, the fall season here, at least in where I live here in the Midwest in the United States. And that creates just a huge shift. So there are some kind of poignant things, I think, that are ingrained in us as people as we grow up, right? The different stages of life, the different times of our lives. We kind of create a rhythm. And starting of the school year is one of those things, even as an adult. Don't you kind of feel that little nudge, maybe a little pang of anxiety or excitement, freshness or newness at the beginning of a school year, even though you might not even have children or grandchildren for that matter, there still is this reference of that experience in your life. And right here, right now, with the energy of autumn and fall as the leaves begin to turn here and the weather becomes a bit more cooler, Somewhat still up and down, perhaps, but the wind just has this, the air just has this this crispness about it, and there's moisture in the grass and and around, it seems. It becomes sort of this sense, there, there becomes this kind of sense or essence from the earth of savoring the moments, savoring these days as the trees start to shed their leaves, they start to just drop them. And sometimes all of a sudden it's really quick and abrupt. And other times they just hang on, hang on as long as they can. So it's like the earth invites us to feel the moments, to really cherish the moments that we have that remain during this cycle of our lives. Whatever cycle you're in, whatever stage of your life you are at, You might be at a crossroads. You might have just completed a massive transformation or transition and are now in the integration stage, or you might be just on that doorstep contemplating whether you're going to turn that knob, open the door, and step over that threshold. In psychic work and healing work, we often talk about these moments, these threshold moments, And in particular, the autumn equinox, if you study the Celtic wheel of the year or the high holy days of the year, that energy of this time really is a pause. It really gifts us all, regardless of what you follow as far as your practices, your sacred practices or your spiritual work, whatever you resonate with. Regardless of that, there is this time that is a pausing time to afford you this chance to reflect on all that has unfolded during the months of this calendar, linear mind, brain focused year. (laughs) You like that? Did you like that? I just gave a nod to your brain in this calendar year. And yet beyond that, from this time, this season last year, where were you in the fall of 2022? of this time last year, as I'm recording this in 2023. So much has unfolded and transpired. You've had last Thanksgiving, you've had last holiday season, Christmas, or, or um, whatever, whatever holidays you, you observe in December and November, and, and you've had the start of the new year and the celebrations and potentially all the birthdays that you've had that are with family and friends and, and loved ones and your birthday, all these different celebrations and these mile markers. And maybe there's been graduations or ending of the school year or weddings or births or deaths. Take a moment to just feel that. You have this opportunity right now there are so many things that have that have the opportunity to gift you with the making of you 
or the breaking of you during this last year. So the points that really made your day or made your month or made your year, you can celebrate, you can acknowledge that and be grateful for it. Have so much gratitude and open heartedness and, and feel that amplify those making moments, those creative moments, those just beautiful synchronistic times and the breaking points. Recognizing that you have been brought to your knees at moments and for some of us very harshly, for some dark nights of the soul, for some new experiences and changes in our bodies or changes in our mental health and for the first time ever... <laughs> getting those formal or official diagnoses so we can get the medication that we might need to help us through this time. Yeah, I can relate. And those breaking points give us the power and the ability to hold ourselves, to love ourselves. The breaking gives us the opportunity to go so deeply into the truest, rawest, purest form of ourselves that we must hold and love ourselves during those times and in the tenderness and the sacredness of them, which, and it's horrific because it hurts and it's, it's numbing and it's confusing and dark and it feels like it will never pass. And then, and then moments come through shards of light to give us hope, to inspire us, to move us toward the light and into more moments of making, into moments of becoming and creating or recreating ourselves because we had the opportunity in the breaking times to connect within our spirit and our soul, not just from this mind. The mind really is fabulous at controlling and navigating life in its structured form. But when it comes to relationship and heart-based knowing, it knows nothing. It doesn't know. It freaks out. And instead, it backs off. It detaches. The mind steps forward in judgment and self-sabotage and creating disconnection within ourselves and and separating our heart, separating our soul and taking power, taking charge and focusing more on making as in achievement, as in results, as an outcome, as in the drive for recognition, acceptance and belonging. Through the mind's eye, that is all external. By how much money is in your bank account, by what you do for a living, by what your house looks like, by how your children are raised and dressed, by where you go to church or if you even go to church. These are all pieces of what our mind has attempted to work and hold on tightly to in order to help us stay safe, help us stay alive, to survive life. But yet the depths of the breaking points the mind cannot control. It must totally surrender. It must totally surrender. I've heard this before. Maybe you have that. You have to have a breakdown to have a breakthrough. Sometimes you have to just let yourself... Not rationalize your feelings. Stop doing that. Please stop, stop, stop doing that. Stop trying to put your feelings into a category of good or bad. This is a good feeling. This is a bad feeling. This is just feeling. This is sensory emotion. This is information. My neurodivergent friends, you understand this is overstimulation externally. And yet in the heart space, the empathic nature of who you are is creating the opportunities for you. And I have said opportunities a hundred times in this audio. But it is true. That is the place that is the threshold to show up for you. Other people cannot show up for you when you are not holding your authenticity in your hands, in your heart, 
Your mind is not authentic. It cannot be. Your mind is not vulnerable. It cannot be. It knows not these things that are required for human relationship and deep, profound connection. If you want to be known, if you want to be seen, if you want to be heard, you must speak from the energetic support of the essence of the heart and of the soul of who you are. And this is authenticity and vulnerability. This isn't sharing a story about yourself or reflecting upon a life experience in a way that the mind has purely rationalized it. This is about understanding that some things cannot be reasoned. There are not reasons for things happening the way they do. There are unexplainable things. There are mysterious things that the mind will never be able to process and come to terms with. So I invite you in this make or break discussion today to look back over this year and give yourself this this pause to consider all of the ups and downs that you've been through and just to embrace and give yourself a huge hug for how you have navigated and moved through. This is not about being evaluative or analytical. Do not use your brain except for to choose some words to express what is in your heart and what is being held by your body until you can get the fucking memo that you have information in your body that can be only translated by the heart knowing that you need your spirit, your intuition for, to understand. It's not about rational and reasonable and practical. It is about understanding. It is about compassionately knowing thyself. And I am in this place right here, right now, today. And I feel it. And I'm passionate about this. We are all at different places on our journey. You might be at a making place or at a breaking place. And the truth is we're at both because both can be true at the same damn time. You can be making while you're breaking. And in order to make, sometimes you got to break. Right? Right? Think about it. When you're redoing some furniture, okay, you have old furniture and you're going to make it into something new or you're going to refinish it or repaint it. You got to scrub it all down. You got to sand it all down, get it to those bare bones of the wood grain in order to be able to refinish it. So you got to break it down in order to make it into what is next. And we are in this space. Don't skip to what is next. You will not be fulfilled. You will not be complete. You will live the same pattern over and over and over again. And this time of the autumn equinox, this time of the fall gives us the moments to let go of the patterning of the skip ahead of the, okay, what's next? Oh, well, that's not working. So what's next? You've got to give yourself this time. This is where the healing happens, is the place in between the making and the breaking. And it's not linear. It's happening at the same time. It's dynamic. It's body, mind, spirit, energy, the making and the breaking and the pause. This space right here, right now, is where the healing happens. So make, break, heal. Break, heal, make. This is how it works. This is the natural rhythm of things, making and breaking and healing, making and breaking and healing. This is the cycle of life, the death, the life, the rebirth, the life, the death, the rebirth. Do you see? Can you feel this? I really hope you can. I'm literally sitting on my bed in the townhouse. Nobody is home. I'm, I'm, I'm flying solo as I often do here, and I feel okay in the alone and in the silence and the quiet. After several days here, I can sometimes get in this state where I don't actually feel like leaving or going out. 
or going to do things. I almost feel just like I should cocoon in this solitude. So I have to really encourage myself to get out, to go out into the world, um, besides just going for a walk around the neighborhood. So today I am going to go out. I'm going to celebrate the earth energy. I'm going to accept her beautiful invitation to feel the moments, to make this day an opportunity for me to to be within myself and also externally within the natural world. I'm going to go and walk a labyrinth. I do that often. I love to do that. I shouldn't say often. I, I do it also. I do it on, I tend to do it on holidays, like Celtic holidays and things like summer solstice and autumn equinox. And also at times in my life when I just, I'm in a transition state and I want to honor myself or I'm working through something and I, I don't need my brain to derail me because it does. It finds the rational answer. And the truth is, is if I, I was focusing just purely on rational answers to things, I would not have the life that I have, this beautiful, dynamic, incredible depth of experience and relationships that I have. I would not have the friends I have. I would have not had the partners I have. I would not have the children I have. Things would be so different and so disconnected and cold and unemotional. And as I look back over this year at this time, <laughs> I've certainly experienced a depth of emotion. So much, so much. So much that at times it is deafening to the point of numbness. And I recognize that my body has definitely bore the brunt of it. It has held me and been strong for me and asked me for guidance and assistance and more care and tenderness and I have rejected it a lot. I have said no to my body and yes to other things to help the feelings not be so intense, you know. And the body is not the villain, it's not the enemy. It is really the vessel, our sacred container. And so today I'm going to walk with my body and help her to feel the freshness of this pause while I connect with the emotional awarenesses of this place, of this threshold, and of the past year. And all the things that have transpired. And my brain will serve me. It will be in devotion to my body. My brain will be in devotion to my heart as I write and journal after my walking experiences today, after my labyrinth visit, to give the deeper connection between all the parts of who I am, body, mind, heart, and soul. And I invite you to... Give yourself time. And even if you're super busy today and you're running the kids and you have family commitments or, or you're working and you just don't have the ability or you just had surgery and you just physically can't, I invite you at some point to just take a couple moments to quiet yourself, to close your eyes, to feel into your body, to touch your heart and acknowledge your heart. Acknowledge the emotional journey you've been on this year, whether you've chosen to accept the emotions or have pushed them away or successfully shoved them into your body. Because let me just be clear, as an empathic, clairsentient being, you have done that. And I know because I've done it too. And yeah, I'm psychic. And yeah, I know energy. And I do it too. It's like a natural instinct to just uh, swallow that emotions. <laughs> Because just that's what we're taught. That's how we function in the world. When we're highly sensitive people and we're, we're bumping around in the world, that's what we do. But we don't have to do that today. And it's not about digging deep and pulling out all the feelings. It's about just taking this moment, closing your eyes for just a second or staring at the ground, putting your hand on your heart with me. Just put your hand on your heart with me and take a nice breath in. First, exhale. <sighs> exhale. Come on, I need to hear you. Ah. <sighs> Just exhale. <sighs> exhale. <sighs> Make some room in that beautiful body 
of yours, that vehicle that has served you so much. (sighs) And now take a nice big breath and fill her up. Hand on your heart. And a soft, long exhale, very gentle, very tender. Let the air exhale and release from the body. Hand on your heart, feel your heartbeat. Hold your hand on your heart until you can feel it. (laughs) What a beautiful gift, this life. This heart in your body. This energetic chakra heart, the essence of who you are, beating in alignment, partnering with your physical human body for your well-being today, for your healing, for the opportunity to show up and to make your life today. Nice breath in. Exhale out. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for listening today to Sunday Morning Coffee. I appreciate you here on the podcast and for following Above Life channel on YouTube. Remember, you can inspire your spirit. You can receive the hope that is available to you. This is your life after all, and you get to live it just Live it. Thanks for being here.